Hi, this is Mam Ali, and welcome to the discussion of Lesson 6, Communication for Academic Purposes. Let's start. For today's lesson, we are going to focus on academic writing, the stylistic elements of good academic writing, refining academic writing, and of course, academic papers. But what is academic writing? This is the style of expression that researchers use to define the intellectual boundaries of their disciplines and specific areas of expertise. This is designed to convey agreed meaning about complex ideas or concepts for a group of scholarly experts. Proceeding to stylistic elements of good academic writing. The first is the overall view. This is the overall structure of academic writing that is formal and logical. Hence, the paper must be cohesive and possess a logically organized flow of ideas. This suggests that the various parts are connected to form a unified whole. When the parts of the whole paragraph work or fit together well, they are called cohesive. Also, there should be transitional devices or narrative links between paragraphs and sentences. This is for the reader to be able to follow your argument. Transitional devices are like bridges between parts of your paper. They are cues that help the reader interpret ideas a paper to develop. Transitional devices are words or phrases that help carry a thought from one sentence to another from one idea to another, or from one paragraph to another. For example, are the words, and, again, and then, besides, because, yet, still, and so on and so forth. The introduction should include an explanation of how the rest of the paper is organized and all sources are properly cited throughout the paper, meaning you must be oriented or familiar with the conventions in citing sources. Next is language. This is the analysis of research problems in diverse disciplines, which is often complex and multi-dimensional. Hence, it is significant that you use language that fits your audience and matches your purpose. We can also incorporate audience analysis to better know the language to use because inappropriate language use can undermine your argument damage your credibility, or alienate your audience. Here are some points to remember. First, the key to successful writing focuses on the levels of formality and conciseness. That underscores writing in a style that your audience expects and fits your purpose. Also, use clear topic sentences and well-structured paragraphs. This is to enable readers to follow your line of thinking without difficulty. Next, avoid using in-group jargon or specialized language used by groups of like-minded individuals. You have to bear in mind that you only use in-group jargon when you are writing for members of that specific group. You should never use jargon for a general audience without first explaining it. Next, avoid using slang or idiomatic expression. In general, academic writing. Slang and idiomatic expressions are words or expressions which are informal. Avoid using euphemisms or words that veil the truth and another deceitful language. Avoid using biased language, including language with a racial, ethnic, group, or gender bias, or language that is stereotypical. The next element is academic tone. This refers to the writer's voice in a written work. It is what the readers might perceive as writer's attitude, bias, or personality. When writing in an academic tone, you must take into consideration the following points. Present the arguments of others objectively and with an appropriate narrative tone. This one is not yours, so definitely you have to be careful of being misunderstood. Describe these arguments accurately and without biased or loaded language whenever you present an argument or a position that you disagree with. 
also investigate the research problem from an authoritative perspective. This will help you balance things out. State the strong points of your arguments confidently by using language that is neutral, not dismissive or confrontational. Avoid making broad generalizations using oversweeping adjectives, adverbs, qualifiers, emotional language, and inflammatory language. Remember, not all people are the same. Here are the next points. Awareness of words you use is vital because words that have almost the same denotation or dictionary definition can have very different connotations or implied meanings. Use concrete and specific words that convey precise meaning. Explain what you mean within the context of how that word or phrase is used within a discipline. Be consistent with your labels. Call people what they want to be called. Use gender-inclusive language. Avoid placing gender identifiers in front of names. In academic diction, you also have to avoid using the following. First, slang expressions, which are very informal language that is usually spoken rather than written. This is used specially by particular groups of people. Cliché phrases. These are the ideas or expressions that have been used too often and is often considered a sign of bad writing or old-fashioned thinking. Metaphors or figures of speech. These are the words or phrases that are used in a non-literal sense for rhetorical or vivid effects. You also have to avoid colloquialisms or the common words or phrases that is used in a non-traditional and informal way. Jargon, or what we call the special words or expressions used by a particular procession or group and are difficult for others to understand. We also have to avoid big words or the difficult or high highfalutin words or phrases that is used for the sake of sounding scholarly. Meaningless words. These are the words or phrases that hold little meaning when you consider the potentially diverse backgrounds of your reading audience. Platitudes or the cliches that also pretend to offer advice, lesson, or moral guidance. Pejoratives or the words or phrases that express the bias of the author. Contractions or the words made by shortening and combining two words. And of course, messages or SMS spellings. And why do we need to avoid the following? These casual expressions may be appropriate in informal or personal messages, but they are inappropriate in academic research papers. The next point is the use of personal pronouns carefully. Generally, you also want to avoid using the personal I in an academic paper unless you are writing a reflection paper or a reaction paper. Writing from the third person point of view. This is important in academic research writing because it makes your paper sound more assertive, more professional, and more credible. The next stylistic element that we need to discuss is punctuation. To establish the narrative tone of their work, scholars rely on precise words and language. Thus, punctuation marks are used very deliberately. Semicolons. The first punctuation is the semicolon. This represents a pause that is longer than a comma, but shorter than a period in a sentence. In general, there are four grammatical uses of the semicolon. First, when a second clause expands or explains the first cost. Second, to describe a sequence of actions or different aspects of the same topic. Third, these are placed before clauses which begin with for instance, even so, nevertheless, and therefore, and to mark off a series of phrases or clauses which contain commas. I want you to pause this video and think of this one. As you can see, this slide can also serve as an example of the usage of semicolons. If you are not confident about when to use semicolons, rewrite using shorter sentences or revise the paragraph. Next is colon. Columns should be limited to introducing, announcing, or directing attention to a list, a noun or noun phrase, a quotation, or an example or explanation. 
joining sentences and expressing time in titles and as part of other writing conventions. We also have hyphens. They should be limited to connecting prefixes to words like multidisciplinary or when forming compound words or phrases like on-site and right-of-way. Dashes. This should be limited to the insertion of an explanatory comment in a sentence. The next element is the most important aspect of academic writing, which is citing sources in the body of your paper and providing a list of references as either footnotes or endnotes. When considering academic conventions, you must take into consideration the following points. It is essential to always acknowledge the source of any ideas, research findings, data, paraphrased or coded texts that you have used in your paper as a defense against allegation of plagiarism. To recall, plagiarism is presenting someone else's work or ideas as your own, with or without their consent, by incorporating it into your full work without full acknowledgement. All published and unpublished material, whether in manuscript, printed or electronic form, is covered under this definition. With reference to academic writing purposes, the guidelines for fair use are reasonably explicit. This means that you may quote from or paraphrase materials from previously published works without formally obtaining the copyright holder's permission. Fair use means that you legitimately use brief excerpts from source material to support and develop your own idea. However, quoting or paraphrasing another work at excessive length to the extent that large sections of the writing are unoriginal, it is not fair use. Rules concerning precise word structure and excellent grammar do not apply when quoting someone. To set off and represent exact language, either spoken or written, that has come from somebody else is the function is the primary function of quotation mark. So direct quotations involve incorporating another person's exact words into your own writing. Meaning, quoting someone means saying exactly what he or she just said regardless of grammar lapses or word choice. The following covers the basic use of quotation marks. Quotation marks always come in pairs. Do not open a quotation and fail to close it at the end of the quoted material. Capitalize the first letter of the direct quote when the quoted material is in a complete sentence. Do not use a capital letter when the, code, when the coded material is a fragment or only a piece of the original material's complete sentence. If a direct quotation is interrupted, mid-sentence, do not capitalize the second part of the quotation. Note that the period or comma punctuation always comes before the final quotation mark. However, it is important to realize also that when you are using some other form of documentation, this punctuation may change. When coding text with a spelling or grammar error, you should transcribe the error exactly in your own text. However, also insert the term sick in italics directly after the mistake and enclose it in brackets. Sick is from the Latin and translate to thus, so, or just as that. The word tells the reader that your quote is an exact reproduction of what you found and the error is not your own. When there is a quote within a quotation, enclose the inner quote in single quotation marks and the whole quotation in double quotation marks. Direct quotations which run to less than five lines are integrated in the text and simply enclosed in quotation marks. Coated material that runs from five or more lines are indented seven spaces, italized, and typed single space. The quotation is also intended at least four spaces from the right-hand margin. No quotation marks are used. And quotation marks are most effective if you use them sparingly and keep them relatively short. Too many quotations in research paper will get you accused of not producing original thought or material. Why is academic conventions important? The scholarly convention of citing sources allows readers to identify the resources you used in writing your paper so they can independently verify and assess the quality of findings and conclusions based on your review of literature. Other examples of academic conventions to follow include the appropriate use of headings and subheadings, 
properly spelling out acronyms when first used in the text and avoiding unsupported declarative statements. Next is evidence-based reasoning. Coursework often asks you to express your own standpoint about the research problem. However, what is valid in academic writing is that viewpoints or opinions are based on what is often termed evidence-based reasoning. This type of reasoning underscores the following. A sound understanding of the pertinent body of knowledge and academic debates that exist within and often external to your discipline. The need to support your opinion with evidence from scholarly sources. An objective stance presented as a logical argument. The quality of your evidence will determine the strength of your argument. The challenge is to convince the reader of the validity of your opinion through a well-documented, coherent, and logically structured piece of writing, which is particularly important when proposing solutions to problems or delineating recommended course of action. Next is thesis-driven. The starting point is a particular perspective, idea, or position applied to the chosen topic on investigation, such as establishing, proving, or disproving solutions to the research questions posed for the topic. A problem statement without the research questions does not qualify as academic writing because simply identifying the research problem does not establish for the reader how you will contribute to solving the problem, what aspects you believe are more critical, or suggest a method for gathering data to better understand the problem. We now proceed to complexity and higher-order thinking. Academic writing addresses multifaceted issues that require higher-order thinking skills applied to understanding the research problem, such as creative, critical, logical, and reflective thinking as opposed to, for example, prescriptive or descriptive thinking. When considering the complexity and higher-order thinking skills, you must take note of the following. First, cognitive processes that describe abstract ideas that can't be easily shown with images, pointed to, or acted out and are used to express concepts to comprehend and to solve problems compromise higher-order thinking skills. I want you to reflect on this. One of the most significant attributes of a good teacher is the ability to explain complexity in a way that is understandable and relatable to the topic being presented. This is also one of the main purposes of academic writing, examining and explaining the significance of complex ideas as clearly as possible. So as a writer, you must adopt the role of a good teacher by summarizing a lot of complex information into a well-organized synthesis of ideas, concepts, and recommendations that contribute to the better understanding of the research problem. We now proceed to refining academic writing. To improve your academic writing skills, you should focus on your efforts on four key areas. First is clear writing. This is the act of thinking about precedes the process of writing. Good writers spend sufficient time distilling information and reviewing major points from the literature they have reviewed before creating their work. Writing detailed outlines can help you clearly organize your thoughts. Effective academic writing begins with solid planning, so manage your time carefully. Next is excellent grammar. Generally, English grammar can be difficult and complex. Even the best scholars take many years before they have a command of major points of good grammar. Take time to learn the minor and major points of good grammar to avoid presenting papers riddled with errors. Spend time practicing writing and seek detailed feedbacks from professors. Good proofreading skills and proper punctuation can significantly improve academic writing. Credible and scholarly sources. It's important to use credible sources in an academic paper because your audience will expect you to have backed up your assertions with credible evidence. The five best resources to help you in writing a research paper include your university library, Google Scholar, ReefSeq, the Internet Public Library, and the Education Resources Information Center or ERIC. First is your university library. They provide you access to several resources such as online databases, ebooks, books, 
journals, and other research articles. Google Scholar is a resource that provides a list of journal articles, portable document formats or PDFs, and websites focusing on much more credible and scholarly sources appropriate for an academic research paper. Next is RepSeq. This is a resource that allows you to research specifically for documents, giving you a better chance of finding credible information to help you write your research paper. Internet Public Library is a resource that allows you to search by subject. It links to websites rather than scholarly journals. Lastly, Education Resource Information Center or ERIC. This is a database that primarily focuses on education but also includes a number of related topics such as psychology, social work, and other social issues. On the other hand, you must refrain from using the following sources when writing an academic research paper. The dictionary, about.com, and Wikipedias, as well as other wikis. The dictionary is a good source. However, it could not provide you with a more specialized definition of terms needed in an academic research paper. About.com about could also provide useful information such as novel ideas and information related to fashion, health, sports, entertainment, and the like. However, such information is irrelevant to academic research writing. Wikipedia.com and other wikis are also good websites. However, the problem with them is that anyone can write and edit them. Hence, you cannot vouch for the credibility of given information. Proceeding to consistent stylistic approach. When your professor expresses a preference to use the American Psychological Association or the APA style or the MLA or the Modern Language Association style or the Chicago Manual of Style, choose the suggested style guide and stick to it. Each of these style guides provide rules on how to write out numbers, references, citations, footnotes, and lists. Consistency and here. Consistent adherence to a style of writing helps with the narrative flow of your paper and improves its readability. And that ends our video. Did you learn something today? Thank you very much for watching. Bye!